Hello guys and welcome to Old School Completionist episode 3. So in this first clip I was actually rendering the video and so I didn't get any audio but uh, got a big swordfish after like hardly any uh, swordfish and tuna caught. As you can see it's like 43 of each of them caught and I got my big swordfish which is incredibly lucky and the same thing happened for bass also. Alright that's 2.5k almost 2.6k pieces of 8 but that was enough to buy a full naval set so I'm going to go ahead and get my first naval set which is going to be grey naval so um... I have like no energy, run energy right now, but should be able to use this minigame telly. And uh, yeah, I'm getting gray first just because I think it'll match with the most outfits. And uh, gray is just a nice color to go with a lot of different stuff. So after gray, I'll probably do brown because that's another semi neutral color than black. Because black is a pretty cool looking one too. So it'll probably match the Slayer cape pretty nicely. But, anyways, let's just see. So I'm going to get the gray naval shirt. Plus 2.5k total. Gray naval shirt, gray tricorn hat, gray naval slacks, and there we go. That looks quite nice. Throw a scale cape and the fury ornament, some other stuff on there. It'll look pretty sweet. When I'm doing some Nightmare Zone now, I just finished my first stream and I did 640k points and I started with three uh, overloads and I now have, uh, I used almost two of them, so that's like 35 minutes for 640k points. So I'm doing hard rumbles. Um, and it's somewhat complicated, but I got this method from Maz, who's a uh, Hexus member, he had a video on it. Um, and it's a pretty good method, I guess you can average like 1.2, 1.3 mil points per hour. And I'm finally getting the hang of it. Um, so yeah, this is working out really well, I need to do three imbues, because uh, for any of you guys who are wondering what I lost to that PK, I did lose my uh, Berserker Ring and like 5k cannonballs. Uh, where's my Berserker Ring? I bought another one already, but I need to imbue it now, so I'm going to go do that. And I still need to imbue the Tyrannical and Sears Rings also. So that's a total of like 1.95 mil uh, Nightmare Zone points that I need, so probably just do like one or two more of these uh, rumbles and I'll have all the points necessary and then I can tick that easily off of my list. But yeah, there we go. I'll show you guys exactly how it looks in a second when I go into the next rumble. So I do a hard rumble and this works with Quest Cape of course because I have Quest Cape, so it's every single boss that it could have. Um, and you basically just have to use a few different strategies for certain ones. Uh, but the, for the most part you use Derok and then you have to use range for a few of them so I bring Blowpipe uh, I probably should have brought anti darts and a uh, Avis device though, it's kind of dumb. I bring the uh, Granite Maul for the uh, when you get Power Surge so at, in the start I always uh, use my Overload and then Rock Cake down to 1 HP and if you flick uh, Rapid Heal once per minute then you'll always stay at 1 HP uh, so you don't need to worry about that and that makes it that actually makes a huge difference, it'll make you last a lot longer because not only does it make it so you hit a little bit higher, but it also makes it so that your absorptions are doing a lot more because monsters can only be hitting one damage on you at a time. So say you uh, let your HP get up to 10 even, you last a tenth of the amount of time. So uh, you just get yourself all the way up with absorptions and uh, flick on the rapid heal once per minute and just kill things and uh, range certain things. I'm not going to go too deep into it, but if you guys would like to see a guide for this, I might be able to put one together. But um, this is the basics of it. I can link you guys to Maz's video also, but it's kind of sped up. It took me a little while to figure it out from his video, but uh, yeah, it looks something like this. I'm probably not doing it perfectly also, which is another thing. I don't know if I'd want to make a guide on it unless I'd spend more time at it, and you only need to spend maybe like two or three hours here to get all the um, views. But yeah, I should be done with this pretty soon, so it's uh, a nice method of doing this. So yeah, 700k reward points in about uh, 40 minutes because I used two overloads, so um, I need to do one more uh, to get a couple hundred k more points, and then I'll be done with my imbues. Alright, let's do these last two rings, get the set done, 650k for each, and they get a bright color and nice bonuses on them. So there we go, the plus 8 in uh, crush attack and defense. Yeah, that's crush. This one is for magic, this one's for range. For strength and slash and stab, and that's all the rings that came imbued. And I also have imbued salve amulet and imbued black or uh, slayer helm slash black mask. Um, so that's all the imbuable nightmare nightmare zone rewards. I guess besides a crystal halberd, um, but it's like 20k points. It's kind of pointless. But all the rings are the major thing that was my goal. So I'm going to take that off my list. All right. Well, I decided to move a few things around in my poh because I've been messing around with my bank, also trying to. Minimize basically, and I'm going to actually build a magic cape rack, which is about a mil. See you later, so I can put all of my skill capes on there. It actually looks pretty sweet, also. Kind of, for some reason, it reminds me of room crafting, I think, just the color scheme. Um, and I'm also going to build the highest level uh, magic wardrobe because why not? It's 
very bright there. Um, but yeah, so I decided to move my uh, costume room so it's a little bit closer to my portal. And I also changed my portal to be a uh, formal garden rather than a regular garden. And I'm going to build some stuff here to make it look kind of nice. But I was thinking of actually doing a full out house design right now, but I don't think I'm going to because it takes a lot of time and I don't really feel like going all out. And I think I'd rather just go all out or not do anything at all. I probably will make a cool house eventually, but I kind of don't want to do it right now because I'm not like uh, full of money. So uh, for now, I'm just going to do the basics of what I wanted to do. But ma mainly, I just wanted to be able to put all of my skill capes on there that I have in my bank so I could clear up my bank even further. And I'll show you guys how much I've cleared up my bank in a uh, few minutes. So yeah, I cleaned up my bank a lot and I got it down to just 408 items out of 800, so that's pretty good. I'll probably keep trying to slim it down even more, but I basically just every so often I go through and get rid of everything that I don't think I need. And uh, speaking of things I don't think I don't think I will ever use body runes. I think I'm just going to drop those because they're probably not worth anything. But uh, I guess I'll quickly go through my bank. Probably not take this, make this take too long. But uh, teleports and random tools and shit like that. Room crafting stuff, um, like resources. Mostly just my gem collection now because I got rid of all the other resources that I don't really need. And uh, like diary stuff. And this is just a few ores that I got at the mother load uh, recently because I need to get 100 golden nuggets to unlock the upstairs area. Uh, this was farming stuff right here. Uh, which I don't really use anymore, but I'm just keeping the stuff that uh, would be silly to get rid of. This is all combat stuff, and this is where most of the money in my bank is, I think. Um, so I do have some decent stuff in there. This is a loot tab that's really just loot from like killing shitty monsters for champion scrolls and monster heads. This is junk, and this is also junk. And this is cosmetic stuff, so I just have the skill capes that I may actually wear at some point. And various other odd little items, mostly related to like completionist stuff. Um, and then my last tab is my actual... I'll go to right here. This is my actual like completionist tab where I have all my champion scrolls. This is my favorite tab obviously. All the champion scrolls, all of the trophies that I have so far, and just some items that I'm using to uh, actively go towards certain goals on that list. And I uh, used the bank overlay and uh, evaluated it like 200 mils, which is uh, pretty rough for a maxed player. Um, but yeah, basically all my money is gone from uh, spending on buyables. But I think it's a little bit inaccurate because it wasn't counting any of my Barrows pieces that were degraded at all, um, so it was basically no money there when that should be a few extra mil. And also I don't think it was counting certain rings quite right because they're imbued, and I don't know if it was counting the blowpipe either, so it's probably closer to like 220 to 250 mil uh, in reality, but I don't exactly know. I mean, I'm definitely low on cash right now, but nothing else that I really need to do for a while is going to cost any money, so, and I'm really not worried about that so much, I mean if I need money I'll just runecraft and uh, as long as I have that available, it's fine. So, I mean, maybe at some point I'll do like a few weeks of runecrafting and just make myself another like one or 200 mil uh, if I really need it. But yeah, if any of you guys are curious about what my bank is looking like, that is uh, how it is now. And it's a lot smaller than it used to be, which I really like. I also put all of my skill capes that I don't think I'll ever wear into my cape rack. Cape rack. Basically, this is just all the nice uh, 99s plus... Um, you know, the two Achievement Diary related capes, which I sometimes wear. And I have enough golden nuggets to buy the uh, upstairs region of the uh, Motherload Mine, which is one of the things on my list, so I'm going to pay these nuggets and now I can go upstairs, which I think is better uh, XP and less crowded and stuff like that, so that'll be nice, but that's another thing done off my list, and I am uh, like 120 something cape XP past 99 mining, yay! Right, I did some loose math based on 23 golden nuggets that I gained today based on the XP I gained and stuff like that. According to that average, you'd get about 58,500 or 58,600 golden nuggets for 200 mil mining uh, if it was at that same ratio. And uh, it would you get like 12.7 or 12.8 nuggets per hour, which is kind of interesting. But also, this is how many ores I got. And I think actually I had about 65 nuggets when I started yesterday. So uh, in 35 nuggets, I've gained. Uh, Oh wow, that's actually one mil, that's pretty good. So uh, a few hours of mining and I actually got myself a mil, which is not too bad. Mostly the runite ores, as you can see, but yeah. I guess that was worth doing. Um, not too bad. All right, well, I decided to do some temple trekking and uh, got my first lumberjack piece on my first undead lumberjack monster kill. So that's lumberjack boots. However, I believe that the lumberjack top is way rarer than the rest of the pieces. So I'll probably have lots of those before I actually get the top. Um, but yeah, I have started uh, work on temple trekking to get full lumberjack. We'll see how long it manages to take. Um, I think there are four total this, yeah, four total lumberjacks that spawn whenever you get this event. And uh, I'm just going through and using, whenever I get the uh, bog event, I'm just teleporting back, like escaping and teleporting back to um, Bird to Rot, which is nice because I can do that with the Mauritania legs, which is pretty cool. But, uh, oh, there's more than four that spawn. Oh, that's nice. Nope, more lumberjack boots. <laughs> lumberjack legs. I think that's like the second rarest piece, so that's cool. 
There we go, more lumberjack legs. Lovely. Boots number three, more boots. <laughs> Hey, there we go, lumberjack hat. So I now have all the pieces besides the lumberjack uh, top, and I've done that in about an hour or so. It'll probably be another like five to ten hours for the actual top, but uh, yeah, I'll probably have like a billion boots because those are super common, and the top is rarer than the rest of them. And on old school, obviously, you can't get multiples. They changed it to the fact that you can't get multiples in RS3, but that was like probably 2012, I think it was, when they updated it a bunch so you could like level up your followers and all that shit. But yeah, in this game, I. Yeah, yeah, you can get multiples and the top is really rare, so it'll take a while for me to get the top most likely unless I get really lucky, but yeah, at least I have the rest of it so far, which is probably pretty lucky to get it all within an hour, so yeah, that's pretty good. And there's more lumberjack legs. Boots. Lumberjack top. I've done this for maybe like three hours and I have full lumberjack. That is so lucky. Usually it takes people like 10 hours to get lumberjack, so that is amazing. Looking like a badass. I should probably get my woodcutting cape out to wear with this shit. Oh yeah. So actually, it took me like three hours to get full lumberjack, which is really lucky. People say it usually takes about ten hours. Um, so according to that, if woodcutting is like 100k XP per hour, which is possible, but really it's more like 90k. But just let's assume it's 100k. That's 300k uh, XP. You know, three hours. So it'll save me 300k XP in uh, 12 mil woodcutting XP, which means that at like 25 mil wood cutting, if I ever get there, it'll be worth it, which is actually really good because usually, like, if it takes 10 hours, then it will take uh, 40 mil wood cutting XP for it to be worth it. So that's, you know, 53 mil wood cut after 99. Um, so, yeah, this is really awesome. I may actually sometime get to 25 mil wood cutting. I can see that happening. So, this is amazing. So, I have a total of 74 of these uh, reward tokens, which do not stack in your bank. So, all of the ones that I get from uh, Temple Trekking, I can redeem here at the bank so I'm gonna do that now and see if I get anything at all decent and uh, guess I'll get back to you guys when I do all this I don't remember where I, re I, I do the other ones because the different looking ones are for the bird or ramble which is the opposite uh, process of temple trekking um, but I will I guess redeem all of these and see if I get any XP or anything like that I don't really remember what kind of stuff you get from uh, temple trekking but Maybe it'll be good, I don't know. 27 PRS. Well, uh, an average of like 1.5k or something per thing which is uh, pretty great, I guess. <laughs> um, but I think that the hard rewards are actually pretty good. I don't, I've never really done hard temple trekking because there's no point in doing it for... I don't, I don't think it's really worth it doing for any reason, but um, it's kind of a waste of time if you're just going for a lumberjack especially because you're just trying to farm a single event. I think I can get rid of all the multiples of the boots and legs and shit just because I think, honestly, it'll just annoy me if I don't have the same amount of all of them. So maybe sometime I'll try to get a placeholder uh, lumberjack top if I ever go for placeholders but if I do I will most definitely get all of the other pieces first so I don't really have to worry about it so yeah I'm gonna say goodbye to all of this uh, garbage that I don't actually need. Alright so in this clip the audio actually corrupted because Camtasia is just lovely and wonderful so in uh, this clip I'm buying a crystal halberd and I'm going to buy this too so that I can go to pest control because it is the best spec weapon to use there I got it imbued, of course, at Nightmare Zone, um, and it's actually an insanely powerful spec weapon. It can hit like 70-70s. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous, but yeah, it's really good at PC for the uh, portals, and it looks like I was DC in there. But I went to uh, finish off my pest control stuff, so I started off by picking up the Void Mage Helm, because it's actually going to be useful for Zolra, and I figured I'd buy it in the order of stuff that I may actually use. Um, I also bought my Elite Void here, uh, and I spent somewhere around like 7 or 8 hours in pest control. And uh, got Alright, so I just finished my last game of Pest Control, so I can buy my last piece of Void. So let's get the Void Knight Melee Helm. Yes, confirm. And Pest Control completed. So yeah, fun fact, this is the first time I've ever owned all of these pieces. Um, never had Void on RS3, even after I was comped and nearly trimmed. So yeah, that was uh, that's interesting, but there we go. Every single uh, piece of Void plus uh, Elite Void and uh, it looks pretty cool. Um, I haven't used this Void Knight Mace in a while, but I actually got the mace a long time before I got any of these Void pieces because I used to use it for uh, soloing Rex because it used to be the best way to kill Rex using Claws of Guthix, and this was the thing you could auto-cast with, which made it a lot easier. So um, yeah, I haven't touched this thing in a long time. It also actually, though, is tied for best in slot with uh, Prayer Bonus for a equipment slot item tied with Crozier's which is kind of interesting and it looks I guess cooler than a crozier it's got like a see-through thing but yeah void is done so that's another thing I can take off my list I think I'm gonna go work on my ancient cavern notes next because that's one of the few things that I have left at this point oh another thing I forgot to mention is that I've been doing a lot of fletching while uh, doing 
pest control because you can just fletch while you're running around while you're waiting for landers if you ever have to wait. And I fletched, got about five or five or six hundred k fletching XP uh, while doing pest control, which is pretty nice. And uh, I was just doing these ones because when I was buying them, at least they were all break even. So uh, steel bolts, smith bolts, and steel darts. And all of them are, I mean, it doesn't really matter what ones you're fletching as long as you're fletching because it's basically infinite efficiency because uh, you're gaining XP for, like, not spending any extra time since I would be doing pest control anyways. And it's the same deal, like, if you're, uh, let's report this person. Advertising websites. Goodbye. Anyways, so yeah, with fletching, like, if you're doing it while doing things like woodcutting or other skills, like, between ticks, it doesn't matter what you're fletching as long as you're fletching. No, either way, you're gaining XP for zero extra time spent, so... It's better if you're just not spending any money than to be spending money on higher XP uh, darts or bolts because if you're playing long enough then you'll get 200 mil either way. Um, so yeah, that's my plan for fletching. It may potentially actually be my first skill to 200 mil in a long time from now just because I'll probably be doing, be doing fletching whenever I can. But the main drawback really is just buying supplies. It takes fucking forever to buy supplies. Um, oh, I actually have some more myth bolts so that's nice. But yeah, like feathers buy limit is like 13k per 4 hours and same with I think all the different dart tips and uh, bolt tips which just is annoying so yeah it takes a while but these ones are worth more than that now I was just managed to pick them up some of them up for pretty cheap but yeah I'm gonna sell all these all of these and uh, get some of my money back all right well, one of the things on my list uh, one of the few things remaining now is uh, filling this right here which is my notes and I'll briefly explain this to you guys because some of you guys may have never heard of this before this is a uh, notebook that you get. It's kind of an odd thing, and it is a trim completion escape on RS3. You can get these ancient pages from Killing Mythal Dragons, so probably a lot of you guys have seen that from Killing Mythal Dragons. You can also get them from Killing Skeletons and Rummaging Skeletons down in the Ancient Cavern, and actually that's faster for getting ancient pages. And there are 26 different ancient pages, and they can go into this notebook right here. And oddly enough, there are 26 pages, but they only fit, fill uh, 20, 23 and a half pages in this book. <laughs> But I think it's because uh, the option on here is actually copy to log, not like put in. So you're copying the things down and each one takes a little bit less than a page, it seems. Like this right here is like a little bit less than two pages, and etc. But anyway, so this thing has 26 pages and um, right now in my inventory I have, what is that, eight pages. Um, the problem with this is that you can get multiples of the pages. So, you know, each time you get another page, the chances of getting an, a unique page are a little bit lower. To the point where, you know, when you have 25 pages, you have a 1 in 26 chance that your page will actually be the page that you want. So, uh, it takes a fairly long time. Uh, I've heard estimates of anywhere between 10 and 30 hours, so it, I don't really know how long it'll take me, but the method I've been using, I can show you guys in a second if any of you guys are thinking about going for this, is probably one of the least glamorous of the trim, or completionist type goals, because the only thing you get is being able to read through this book, which you can't really wield, you can't really show off, and doesn't really do much of anything. Uh, but it is a thing that uh, is on my list, so I'm going to do it. And I actually did do it on RS3, but they updated it a while ago so that you wouldn't get multiple pages, so it took a lot less time on there. Um, so I, I don't really know how long it's going to take, but it could potentially take like a very long time, so I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how long it takes, but... Um, <sighs> so I realized that I talked for like way too long about this thing, it's really not that interesting, but the basic idea of this uh, thing is that you run down and you rummage the three skeletons down in the ancient cavern, and you just run around, rummage the skeletons and quick hop and brew whenever you need health and etc. And uh, I spent somewhere around like 10 hours uh, to get all of these pages, and the last page took probably half of that time, uh, maybe a little bit less, but it took a very very long time. Um, but yeah, this is what it looks like. You just run around there, quick hop, and keep doing that. And it was a little bit time consuming, a little bit expensive, but it wasn't too bad. And uh, I finished that off and got the last page on uh, Saturday, like midday. So that was nice to get done. And uh, this is actually an RS3 trim rack, as I said earlier. And I'm going to show you guys up on screen right now the total uh, completionist stuff that I have left remaining. It's actually, I'm blowing through this stuff a lot faster than I really expected that I would. So yeah, as you can see, I have Castle Wars armor left, I have pets, which is the major thing, I have POH stuff, which I may put off for a little while, I have three more taxidermy trophies, and I have solar mutagens, which I may or may not go for, like, straight off, because they're actually way rarer than I expected, and then respawn locations and teleport to bounty target are both um, just things I can buy with GP that are quite easy to get. So yeah, the list is looking pretty slim at this point. Really, the main things left are just go uh, Castle Wars and Trouble Brewing and Pets. And uh, I still need to do the taxidermy trophies, of course, and I will be working on KBD this week, probably. And uh, I may actually save Caress for a while, though, because Broad Darts are coming out, probably, if they pass, and that would make Caress way faster kills 
than if I had to kill him with the uh, leaf bladed sword. So uh, I may end up waiting for that. And then Shark I'll probably also be working on whenever I'm AFK. So the list is looking pretty slim. This is actually going by a lot faster than I expected. But yeah, I'm making really good progress and I'm really looking forward to uh, finishing off this stuff and starting up on the pets. That is page one right here. Examine text. This seems to have been torn from a book. That is the correct examine text. Let's copy it to the log. Yeah! Fucking finally, Jesus Christ. So that took like, at least 10 hours. I decided to do some KVD because I do still need the KVD heads to work on my taxidermy stuff. And I got a dragon med on my 21st kill. And those are 1 and 128. And uh, they are actually the original drop of KVD. They used to be the unique and interesting drop of KVD. Uh, back in the day, so KBD was the first and is still the only boss in RuneScape Classic and was the first boss ever to be released in RuneScape. And DMAD used to be a big deal, like it's still a couple mil on, on Classic because it's the best helm in the game. But yes, yeah, the same rarity as uh, KBD heads, if only that was the heads, but oh well. I'm back at Trouble Brewing for today, and this is where I'll probably be camping uh, Trouble Brewing for like 10 hours today to finish off uh, my second naval set because I do still want to try and average one naval set per week and I uh, can just do it all in a Sunday. <laughs> it's pretty good actually, it works out pretty well because trouble brewing is really really AFK once you do your uh, 100 buckets. I have I usually put off all my homework from Thursday and Friday until Sunday, um, so I still have some homework to do. Um, but yeah, I will be AFKing and trouble brewing all day today. I'll probably see if I can get my brown naval set because uh, that was the next one on the planned list. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be working on that today and I will actually be doing my weekly trouble brewing event also. Trouble Brewing Sundays will be starting at 3 p.m. again today, and I'll be streaming it, and I'll have a uh, live stream notification video on the channel, so if any of you guys want to come play Trouble Brewing, it will be in World 304 and the uh, OSRS TBFC, and actually I will be in here, uh, like as soon as this video is posted, I'm already in here obviously, so I will be here for most of the day, so if any of you guys want to come and hang out, I will be AFKing until 3, so before then I won't be paying, playing any actual games, but at 3, We'll be playing some real games and hopefully we'll get some good turnout. We've been having a fair number of people coming and playing uh, the past couple weeks that I've been doing this and uh, has been enough people to actually play legitimate Trouble Brewing games, which has been really fun. And you can get a lot more uh, tokens per game or piece of eight per game if you play real games and if you AFK. So uh, yeah, all of you guys are invited. It's really fun. You can get this stuff that I'm wearing right now, the uh, banners, the naval stuff on all different colors, and it's pretty cool stuff. So. All of you guys are welcome to come play that. I think that's about it for this episode, guys. So thanks a lot for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next week for episode 4 of Old School Completionist. And I may have a couple of uh, other videos out during the week. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I appreciate it a lot. Thanks for the support, and uh, I will see you guys next week for episode 4.